2024 CR 1043, State of Texas versus J. Angel Juarez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Mr. Sadelman. Defense. Our basically on it. And are you Mr. Juarez? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're here on a restitution hearing. Is that correct, state and defense? Yes, yes Your Honor. All right. And the state's witness is appearing by Zoom. I, the court will note for the record she was here at 9 a.m. Uh, defense was in juvenile. Uh, any objections to uh, Ms. Warner appearing by Zoom? Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. And do you have any objection to her appearing by Zoom? All right. Uh, state, you may proceed. Ms. Warner, were you involved? Oh, just one second. You're going to call Ms. Warner as state, a witness? State calls Keanu Warner. All right. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Keanu Warner. All right. State. Warner, San Antonio, you? Texas. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Ms. Warner, were you involved in a collision <laughs> that occurred on or about May 14th of 2023? Yes, sir. And could you briefly describe the circumstances of that collision? Yes, sir. Um, I believe it was around that time. Um, I was at Babcock 7-Eleven. I was parked in a designated parking spot in front of the corner store. Um, the other person that actually hit my vehicle was parked in a parking space that was not a designated parking spot. And a police officer happened to just be passing through the convenience store. And as he was passing through the um, person and the um, truck was backing out. And so the cop hunked his horn to like, let him know, like someone's behind you. And he ended up hitting the cop car and in the process of him hitting the cop car, the cop got out of the vehicle. And as the officer got out of the vehicle, um, the person driving the vehicle ramped my car out of the way to flee the scene. And what damage did your vehicle sustain? Um, I have pictures I can submit via email if y'all need them. But all the back of my bumper, my head, my um, the back of my bumper was ripped off. Um, I have a, I had a light that was damaged. It's pretty, it's pretty in depth. I also, um, I sent in the um, estimate for, to get the collision fixed. So y'all have that. And it goes a breakdown by exactly what was damaged. Who did you go to, to have your, the damage to your vehicle uh, assessed? I don't remember the exact collision place, but if I can have a few seconds, I can pull up the estimate and I can tell you. And Ms. Warner, what did collision estimates tell you would be the amount of the amount of money required to repair your vehicle? Um, it's going to be listed on the document i don't have the exact dollar amount in front of me does, but does six thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars sound about right to you more or less correct and what vehicle did you have at the time a 2020 buick enclave and have you been compensated for the amounts of the loss to your vehicle by any other source no i have not Pass the witness. Defense. At the time of the uh, incident, was this Buick Enclave was it covered by insurance? It was. Relevance. Oh, I'll I'll let her answer. She said yes. And uh, did you make any type of claim with that insurance for payment? Not with mine, because the person that hit my car should be responsible for it. So I tried to go through their insurance. And I think you previously said that you uh, have not been com compensated by anybody else for any repairs on the car. Is that correct? Correct, because he didn't own the vehicle. So I was going back and forth with the person that actually owned the vehicle. The vehicle he towed it out, it belonged to someone else. And her insurance, it almost seemed like it wasn't real insurance. I was going back and forth with them, and I never ended up um, hearing back from them. Okay, so let me... So this Buick Enclave that you were driving that day, 
Did you own that? Correct. I'm financing it. I had just actually purchased it April the 19th. I wanted to make sure because that sounded like maybe you said someone else owned it. So, you, but you owned it. No, your... the vehicle. No, the vehicle that the person you're representing, the ve no. vehicle he totaled out, wasn't his I'm, vehicle. I'm talking about your vehicle. That's all I'm caring about. It's, it's, okay, it's, and that's what I was stating. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. All right. So, on the Buick Buick Enclave, the 2020, you said it. Uh, you didn't make a claim insurance, and nobody else helped you pay. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. No further questions, Julie. Any other questions of this witness? No, Your Honor. All right. So uh, what the court has heard from this witness, and everyone correct me if I'm wrong, that she went to collision experts, the amount which both parties off the record have previously tendered to the court, the amount, and that amount is $6,399.22. That's what the court has. I know, State, you asked her a question, and she said $6,399. But according to the documents that both parties submitted to the court, it's $6,399.22. So do both parties agree that that's the amount from collision experts? And then we'll get to the restitution amount. Yes. I think we agree that that is the amount included by collision experts. Right. That's correct. And I was provided a copy of that previous to the hearing. So that was All right. So it appears to the court that that's the restitution amount. The court will hear whatever argument the defense has as to maybe why that should not be the amount. Your Honor, uh, the last court hearing is when we had the hearing on my legal arguments for it. I won't re rehearse those. And the court uh, overruled those. All right. And so the, the argument you want to re-urge, that's... No, the... no, I won't re-urge those. They're, they're on the record. They're already overruled. All okay. right. Um, since the research that I've done, Your Honor, uh, I, I could not find anything that says that she's required to uh, file under insurance. I just wanted to make sure she hadn't done it. So I don't, I don't really have anything presented to the court other than a prior argument that she already All All right. So then the amount of restitution that's going to be owed is $6,399.12. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Was it 12 or 20? I'm sorry, 22 cents. Thank you. So the record can be clear. $6,399.22. That's the amount you have to pay. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. We can go off the record. How are you planning on paying that? Paying the dollars. Do you not currently have employment? Oh man, my days but uh, I had quit. They, they were trying to withhold one of my checks. They're trying to do what? They were trying to withhold one of my checks. Why? I have no idea. All right, so here's the thing. You're getting employment. Do you understand? How old are you? 18. All right, how are you supporting yourself? Uh, I was when I had my job, but I recently just... How long has that been? Like two or three weeks. Two or three weeks? So have you not eaten in two to three weeks? How are you eating if you don't have money? My mom cooks dinner. All right. So here's the thing. Parents are letting young people stay at home now, not in school, don't have a job. But in this court, you're getting employment and you're going to pay her back the $6,399.22. Do you understand? So what are your plans? How are you getting employment? Uh, my brother in office goes to trust So this Gonna try to talk to one of his bosses and so why haven't you talked to him before then? Because I need my ID. I'm working on getting my ID. Why don't you have an ID? Uh, I have a schedule of appointments. No, no, no. Since when have you not had an ID? How long has this been? I haven't had one. Well, how did you get employment at this other place if you don't have an ID? So I'm a baby daddy. You're the owner of the money company. You have the mo your mother's baby daddy. So your stepfather, your father? Mm, I don't consider him as my stepfather, but yeah. The, the father of my little sister is the same. It's just All right. father. So stepfather. All right. I, you know, it's always, you've done CPS cases. Yeah. When people say certain things, it's hard to see the family it, it tree. Would, it, would, the mother, it would be his sister's father, all right? All right. So here's the thing. I'm requiring you to get a job. If you don't have a job, a motion to revoke is going to be filed and you're getting a job within 30 days, there are plenty of places for you to have employment. I see all down the street, 
employment available at Burger King, wherever you knock your pride aside because you're trying to get employment so you can pay back what you owe. You understand? Yes, and if this vehicle that you were in was stolen, all you had to do was stop. And you know what would end up happening? You would have had an unauthorized use of a vehicle. But now you not only have that maybe, but you have this evading and you just wrecked her brand new car for her that she just bought. You understand? Yes, so, uh, Ms. Abrams, he's to have employment within 30 days. And if he doesn't have employment within 30 days, a motion to revoke is going to be filed. You understand? Yes, and I don't know if you've just been laying around, not getting your identification, but that's going to stop. That's not, that's not well, I mean, you don't have your identification. And you're saying your mother's baby's daddy gave you a job. I mean, that's what you... Am I saying something that he did not say? Did he not say he didn't need his identification because his mother, his mother's baby daddy got him a job that he quit because his mother's baby's daddy's friend or employer would not pay him, was holding back his check? That's what you told me. Yeah, but I didn't say I didn't need my ID because I do need my ID. I have an appointment scheduled in January. No. Well, January is not going to help you. You better go back to that job with your mother's baby's daddy so that you can work to pay her what you owe. Is there any way I could like uh, go like because I know there's one in uh, Universal City. Is there any way I could go out of Bear County to go get my ID from over there? Or... That's not my issue. That's on you. Sorry. And if you're gonna have a dollar sign on your finger, you need to have money to match that dollar sign. You understand? She wants her six thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars and twenty two cents. You've ruined her day that day. Can you imagine if you had a brand new car and somebody plows into it and wrecks it? Yeah. So you're getting a job within 30 days. However you get your identification, that's a problem you're going to have to solve. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So I'm allowed to leave Bear County to go get You're my allowed to work within 30 days. All right. That's yes or no. Do you understand? I think we're just, yeah, since normally you can't leave Bear County without permission, whether you have permission to go there so within 30 days, he needs to have employment, the end. And then once he gets employment, uh, Miss Abrams, if he doesn't have employment in 30 days, file a motion to revoke. If he has employment within 30 days, then we need to bring him back here to find out how much he's going to be paying per month to her to pay down this restitution. Judge. Um, okay. Yeah. Typically, the cashiers will put it in the system and give them a dollar amount. And mm -hmm. um, once that's good, then I can give a supplemental report to send to you. All right. Well, let them know. I'm not going to be satisfied with $50 a month. All right. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for zooming in. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. You too. Bye bye.